This is the plaintiff, Michelle Lasson. She says, her upstairs neighbor poured cocoa powder from his upstairs window into her air conditioner. Now the thing's fried. The cops looked at the surveillance footage and deemed the act intentional. And the defendants refused to buy her a new air conditioner. Some people. She's suing for $143.93. The cost of a new unit. These are the defendants, Dodna Soto and her son, Sebastian Gilliard. Dodna says she wanted to cut sugar out of her son's diet. So she tried to give him a sugar-free cocoa powder, and he evidently didn't like it, and poured it out his window so she wouldn't find out. The plaintiff is claiming her unit's now broken, but she tried to get it to blow cold air in the winter. And everyone knows you need hot air for an air conditioner to convert into cold air. They're accused of heating things up. The defendants have filed a countersuit for $1,208 for plumbing costs and emotional distress. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that her upstairs neighbor poured cocoa powder into her air conditioner and caused the thing to burn out. But the defendant says the plaintiff is claiming her air conditioning unit is broken, but it's not. It's the case of cuckoo for cocoa powder. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Lassane, you are suing your neighbors, Ms. Soto and her son, Mr. Gilliard, for $143.93 in damages to your AC unit. You have a counterclaim against her for emotional distress and a plumbing bill. Let me hear from you first, Ms. Lassane. What happened here? Okay, on February 23rd, um, my daughter sent me a text, and she said, Ma, I was sitting here doing on remote, she was on remote at the time, doing homework in the classroom, and I see something come down and hit the AC. And I said, what? So I go looked at the, out the window to look at it, and I, you know, I, excuse my friends, I said, oh, hell no, who did this? So I went over to the manager office, had the manager office, I said, this is that what happened. I showed them the picture, and they said they're going to look at the camera and call me back. So they, because I said it came for either floor, the third or the second, I don't know. So they did, and they called me back the next day, and they said that they see where it came from, second floor, where the screen went up, the hand went out, and it dumped right into the AC. That what was dumped in the AC unit? Cocoa powder? Yes. Okay. So they was calling her for a couple of days. I guess they didn't get her. And when they finally did, um, they told her what happened. She came downstairs and knocked on my door. And I said, yeah, they were trying to get you because your son did it. They told me. And she said, no, he didn't. I said, yes, he did. They told me what happened. And I said, you know what? Just go talk to them. I'm not going to argue with you. Later on that same day, that evening, Water was poured out on the AC, where you could see in the pictures where water splattered all over the AC. But this stuff that poured out earlier with the water is wintertime, all caked up inside the AC. So when I thought that it was who poured the water, warm, who poured the, the water, who poured the water, I have no idea. You have to ask them. How do you know, know that water was poured? Because it was all on the window and all on the AC. That's why it turned brown, cakey. See that? It's brown and cakey. Okay. So she says, no, he didn't. You say, yes, he did. It's on the video. And what happens next? So they told me I had to file a police report. So I sent the pictures that you have to the police officer. After he reviewed the pictures, then he went on the camera and he looked himself. He called me back. He said, ma'am, that looks intentional. Do you want to press criminal charges? I said, no, I know them. I'll just, you know... Hopefully, they'll just pay for it because if the AC doesn't work, they'll pay for it. Well, it didn't turn out to that. It turned into a big taxi. Can I ask you a question? When did you finally try the AC to see if it worked? Um, one day, it got a little warm, so I told my daughter, turn it on to see if it worked. She had it on, and I said, you know what? Let me check to see if the AC is cold, whatever, in her room. I opened her door. It's hot as heck in there, and I'm like... I'm waking up, I'm like yelling and screaming, why didn't you tell me that this thing didn't work? You fell asleep and you in here sweating up a storm, it's hot. All right, so do you ever confront her again and say, hey, when are you gonna pay for this? Um, housing talked to her again, and then um, what I did, I said, you know what? 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to have my son buy an AC for me. And I, okay. I made a copy of the receipt after he bought it. And I took it upstairs to her. Still okay. nothing. All right. So what is going on, Ms. Soto? Um, in regards to the air conditioner, I actually received this paperwork April 21st, which was two months after the fact that this occurred. Um, I has a police report attached. So the same day I received it, I did go down to her and I said, um, what's going on? What's this? And she said, your son broke my air conditioner. I'm like, well, are you sure? She's like, yeah. I said, does it power on? She said, yeah, it does. She said, it, it also blows out air, but it's coming out warm. I said to her, well, you know, I have an air conditioner and sometimes because, you know, it's cold, the air from the outside converted to, you know, the air on the inside doesn't come out properly. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, if it's cold outside, there's no hot air to be converted into cold air. Right, into but the according apartment. to what you're saying, it is, it is April now, not February. So, right, but, uh huh. Right, but she said she checked it in February. She knew that the damages occurred in February. And yet she knew she she knows it doesn't work, but she never never knocks on your door. Right, right. I don't know. I'm so. finding that hard to believe. She doesn't look like the kind of person to take things lying down. Yeah. You two know each other before this, right? I don't know her, but she is my uncle's ex, and they have children together. I know of her. I've never had, you know, I never spoke to her. I don't so it's know just, her. it's I a just coincidence that you end up in the same housing uh, building. Right. But her, your uncle has four kids by her. Right. Did your uncle have problems with her? Yes. Okay. And I do feel like it may be a conflict of interest that she has with me. Because she doesn't like your uncle? Right. Well, was there ever a problem before this? Between me and her? No. Yeah. Oh. All right. Has there been problems since then? Um, what's happening is um, a lot of problems, actually. Like, she's constantly harassing us. Um, I have just a whole bunch of stuff. Like, she'll harass my children because of the air conditioner. Once in September, when they were going back to school, she was saying, you know, your kids, or well, she was saying to Sebastian, oh, that boy right there, he's the one that broke my air conditioner. They owe me money. Well, Sebastian, um, did, did you ever speak to Sebastian and find out whether he poured the cocoa? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Let's put Sebastian under oath, shall we? <laughs> Sebastian, can you raise your right hand? I already did, Yana. He's oh, good. you already did? Oh, good. Okay, sworn. Sebastian, good. you're already sworn. That's fine. So you know you're supposed to tell the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you tell me what happened? Um, so, like, the cocoa powder? That part? Yes. Okay. So, um, my mom bought a non, like, non-sugar added cocoa powder, and I was trying to make myself chocolate milk until I tasted it and it didn't taste that good. So then I decided to pour it out the window so my mom wouldn't know that I didn't like it. So how, was it in a bottle or was it in an envelope? It, it was like a plastic tube. No, it wasn't like a tube. It was like a square, a yeah. plastic square. Yeah. And it was like and you, yellow and then you could pour it out. Oh, like OK. Had a yeah, that's it. He has defined a Nestle's that quick. Right. <laughs> All right, so, but, so you poured the whole thing out the window? Yeah. Why? Why didn't you just tell your mother you didn't like it? Because then I might, I'd probably get in trouble. What, you... Because she wants me to stay low. Like, she doesn't want me having that much sugar. Right. Even I, now. Right. I understand that. But isn't she just going to go out and buy more and think you love it if it's missing? Mm -hmm. You didn't think that far ahead, did you, Sebastian? <laughs> so, oh, Sebastian loves this. Look, he, he drank it all. We need to buy some more. So... But did you see that you were pouring it on top of somebody else's air conditioner? No. Right. Yeah, that's kind of an important part. You need to look down and see what's down there. You could be pouring it on someone's head or a baby in a baby carriage, you know? All right, thank you, Sebastian, for your honesty. Ms. Soto, uh, you have a counterclaim against her for $1,000 for emotional distress and for a plumbing bill. You're going to have to go into detail on the emotional distress part because just telling me she harasses me isn't proving your case. You have to be very specific and tell me what you're talking about. Okay. Um, I'm, I was pregnant. I just had a baby. She's three, four months now. Five. And I was pregnant September 28, 2021. I was walking into my building. Miss Lassane was standing in front. As soon as I entered the building, she decided to talk in tongues, chanting 
when I came into the building. I'm, you know, I'm religious, I'm Christian, and that kind of scared me. Like, I'm like, why is she doing that? And um, why, why did that scare I, you? Because she was talking in tongues, like blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know, I couldn't understand it. It was scary, it was scary. I'm pregnant five months at the time, and you know, I have an unborn child, and people do voodoo and witchcraft, and I was scared. So I, that day, I called the police department and I filed a harassment complaint against her. You actually have a video of that, correct? Right, I do have video footage. You guys seen that? So this is you videoing her? Right. And then you're saying into the camera, can you believe she was harassing me like that? But she doesn't, she just has her back to you. Like, what is it? Yeah, I already had entered the building. That I recorded after because when okay. I entered the building is Your when Honor? it began. Can I say something? You no, not right the second, not in the middle of her testimony. Go ahead. I'll give you the floor to respond to these to her counterclaim in a moment. Go ahead, Ms. Soto. Yeah, so I re I recorded it after I passed her up just so I can get that right. video. Right, and, and that's fine, and but I'm not sure that entitling it, video of her harassing me is accurate because I don't really see that there. I just see, okay. you know, I see her in, you know, just leaning there and saying something I can't understand, but, you know. All right, so... Um, yeah, no, that's okay. I also have the police report also from that day. Well, tell me, why don't you tell me about the harassment? Tell me what she did to you. You told me this story, okay. now tell me others. Because you're asking okay. for a thousand dollars for harassment, so I need to hear yes. the story. So Christmas, I actually was sick, and she called the police department over, um, and said that we were making too much noise. I was like about to give birth. It was December 25th, and I was due uh, January, and she called the cops to my apartment and saying that we were making a lot of noise, which we weren't, and I was sick. Did anything happen with the police, or the police just went away? Yeah, no, they came up and they was like, hey, Ms. Hussain is saying that you guys are making noise. And I'm like, well, I'm actually very sick. I'm, we're not making any noise. Only my oldest is awake. He was like, okay, well, you know, just, you know, keep it down if anything. I said, okay. All right, All right let me ask you about the plumbing bill that you're suing on. Um, according to you, she should have to pay your plumbing bill of $208. Why? Um, the, the pipes are all connected. There's like one line and... Um, when I moved in, I saw that um, in the tub it was clogged, which I have video footage of that, and I sent you guys as evidence. So they sent a housing worker to the apartment, and he um, he said, oh, listen, whatever's down there, I can't get to it from here. I have to go downstairs and unclog it from downstairs. He went and tried to do that with no luck. M multiple times about like four or five times, maybe like even six times, um, they came and tried to unclog it from upstairs with no luck because they yeah, have to go Yeah, but I don't understand. Downstairs. You guys are in a housing authority building, so why don't you just tell housing that your plumber that you sent says X, so make sure, because the housing authority can make her give the plumber access. So it doesn't make any sense, but also right. you said it's it $208. And I'm looking yes. at the bill. The $208 includes $182. Yeah, that's the other, other balance. Bill. What's other balance? The other balance is all the, the times they came, but it's not separated. It's not separated. The How do I know that that's what there? that is? This is just your bill from housing. It says unclogged right. tub, and it, it's only $26. It's not $208. Yeah, that was, yeah, no, the $182, that was the um, clogs. Do you have any proof of that? And then... Do you have any yeah, proof? Yeah, well, on the bill, that's the only bill they gave me. Then the one no, for no. October No, no, listen, 26th. listen, listen, listen. You're, uh -huh. you're, you're suing for the bill, so you have to prove to me that there's $208 in plumbing bill. The document you gave me proves there's $26 in plumbing bill. Sebastian, leave your mom alone. She has to concentrate. That one's the, Sweetie, leave her alone a second. That one, the yeah. one with the 26, I didn't even allow him to come up. He came in and he said, oh, um... Okay, uh, you're not hearing me. I, I need to see $208 in, 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 in actual plumbing bills. Well, that is it. That's That's all you got? Because this isn't it. it you know that, right? Specify. You are, but you can see, you know that this doesn't prove that. This just proves $26, and it doesn't prove it's her fault. So I, I don't well, understand. I, I don't even understand. Look, stop. I don't even understand how there can be her fault. Because if she's ornery and unpleasant and she's not going to let you in, you tell housing, hey, 
talk to the plumber, and then housing takes care of that. I don't see how that would be Which your I problem. Don't. And plus, also, you haven't proven $208 of that. And I know that they actually did unclog your, your thing. So I don't know if it's, if it's something they have to go down there or not. And if they do, then it should be easily done by the landlord of your building, which is the housing well, authority. I, may I say something? No, because I want to ask Ms. Lassane a question. What is the problem between you two? What is the well, problem? You know, Does it have to do with back. your ex? Or does it have nothing to do with your ex? It has absolutely nothing to do with him. I spoke to him a month ago about this issue. He said to pay her no mind. He know he said it's disrespectful to me because I'm his kid's mom. He <laughs> told me that on the phone. What happened on 928? You see how I was standing outside? I stand outside every morning to greet the kids. I'm like the grandma of the hood. To greet the kids and say good morning. Uh, people riding by and waving to me and all. She, I had a stop, a door stopper in the door. She's, this, this girl is so terrible. She came out, she pushed it out and locked me out the building. Now, mind you, I'm in a robe with a nightgown, no keys, no, um, no ID to get in because I had the door stopper because I'm greeting everybody. I have not once have I ever said anything to her children. The reason why I started praying and I am religious. I am, I am a godly person. I started praying because when she I don't know. Ne neither one house. of you seem to be particularly godly about this situation because you would kind of realize that somebody should act like the adult and just kind of move on from this and have peace in your home. Because if you can't have peace in your home, where are you going to have just, peace? She, the things that she do, Your Honor, I mean, I've been putting up with so much. The things that she does intentionally, and I still act like I don't see her or her children. I don't say nothing to her or her children. All she right. is very uh, Here are my findings after listening to you. I am going to order the defendant and the son um, to pay the $143.93. The son because he did it, and the defendant because there is parental liability in a situation like this because the boy is in her house and that's where she should be monitoring him that he not do things like this. But um, I don't think it was done intentionally, uh, certainly, but I, uh, I don't care that, that you say, that the police say, that they think so. I, 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 I buy the story I'm being told, but it doesn't matter. The, the fact of the matter is if the AC doesn't work now, the AC doesn't work now and it's due to this because, yeah, it could be other things, but this is the only thing I know happened to the AC. $143.93. On her counterclaim against you, I don't see evidence for a $208 plumbing bill, and it sounds like each of you are dishing it out to each other. I have a piece of advice for you folks. Unless you guys are enjoying what you're going through, and maybe you are, maybe you're the kind of people that enjoy this, just stop. Each of you make a goal to be the bigger person and just stop. Ignore the other person. No more back and forth. Good luck to you. Thank you. The plaintiff prevails. She's going to get the money for a new air conditioner, the $143 she was asked for. The defendant gets nothing on her countersuit. So, Ms. Lassane, let me ask you something. Have you ever considered moving? How do you feel I'm about that? I'm not moving. They're in the process. Um, I'm speaking on housing because I have other court cases in court that somebody has to go. Well, other cases, they're not this one. This one you have prevailed in. You, this, you won the case. What do you think? How do you think she's going to respond now, now that you've won the lawsuit against her? The same way as she's been acting mischievous and Ill, uh, erratic, as usual. Well, I mean, this is terrible. What can you do? How can you live like this? I, you know, sir, my children are related to her. They don't get involved. But they're tired of it because she's calling me names. It's, it's not right. She's very disrespectful. Well, look, it's a terrible situation. Uh, I feel really sorry for you, and I don't know what you're going to do, but it looks like somebody's got to go. Uh, good luck to you, okay? Thank anyway, you congratulations. Sir. You prevailed in your lawsuit, and get that new air conditioner. You got the money now. Thank you. <laughs> Harvey, what are your thoughts? Doug, the laws on parental liability really vary from state to state. There are some states that say the parent is only liable if the kid commits a willful act. There are other states that say if it's a negligent act, the parent's still liable. But most states say that in certain circumstances, especially with young kids, there is a duty to supervise.
You've spoken a few times about having a home in North Carolina. Dying to know your opinions about the out-of-state speeding law, which can make a first-time offender lose their license for a minimum of 30 days. Is this fair? North Carolina does have a law that says that if you get a ticket for speeding out of state and that state notifies their Department of Motor Vehicles, they can suspend your license. Suspend and your license for not paying the ticket? If you're convicted of it, they'll send out a notice to you that you have uh, 10 days to request a hearing or take an appeal or something. And if you don't do that, your license is automatically suspended for 30 days. But here's for, the, for a ticket you already paid for in another right, state? Right, and, and, and here's why I understand why everybody wants to have safe streets. We don't want people speeding like maniacs, but here's where I have an issue with this. If I get a ticket, I'm a North Carolina driver with a license from North Carolina, and I get a ticket in California, my once-in-a-lifetime trip to Disneyland, let's say, right? Usually, you just pay those by mail. You get, you get the notice right. in the mail, and you have a choice. I can have a trial in Sacramento, or which uh, is, two which, months from now, right, fly right, back to California. Right, at, at tremendous expense. Right. Or I can just pay the $200, whatever it is, and say, oh, oh well, forget about that. Well, that's the problem, because it, it could be a totally bogus ticket. There might, you might have great defenses to the ticket. Well, and I'm sure that there's those who would say, I did my time. I right. already paid that ticket. Right. I took driving school. Took Why are you punishing you me again? That? But the answer to that is that um, driving is a privilege, not a right uh, absolutely. in any particular state. So they can really do what they want to do. Right. Um, but, you know, they, the problem is also the state has had another glitch with it that they're trying to work out, which is when they send that notice that you have 10 days, Lately, it's been taking a week and a half to get to people. So by the yeah. time they open it, they're already driving on a suspended license, and they're past the deadline well, to request the hearing. Well, 10 days is ridiculous. It's too short. It's too short so with the U.S. A, mail operating right. the way it's operating. They're trying to get a legislative fix with the legislature to bump it back up to like 30 days. I, I just don't even see how they have the time to do this. This has to be so incredibly time-consuming. Right. Well, that'll do it for this session of the People's Court. We'll see you next time.